miserable. <laughs> what a miserable, miserable day. Oh my goodness. Started off today with a wonderful festive reformer Pilates. Chloe had the um, Christmas tunes playing and a few of the ladies turned up in their Christmas jumpers, which was great fun. I did wear this to arrive um, and then very swiftly took it off because it was a very, very tough class to start the day today. Decided to actually do a little bit of a pamper, wash my hair at the club. Um, so it's just gonna get fluffier and fluffier <laughs> as the morning goes on. And then a quick dash, deja vu to yesterday, another quick dash into the farm shop. Actually bumped into Charlie there. <laughs> Didn't realize he was doing a shop too. So it was great because we had actually both picked up a few of the same things like yo yogurts and soups, etc. I have chosen the pea and watercress for my lunch today, which I cannot wait. The plan today was to do, let's put my heater seat on, was to do a load of kind of baking, kind of um, getting a few things ready for the big day. For realness, like she never judged, never judged me. I'll my podcasts always blare out at me. But I've realized that the cream that I need to make my eggnog ice cream is coming in tomorrow's Ocado order. So I'm gonna make my eggnog ice cream tomorrow. But what I think I will do today is make my gingerbread. So that's the plan. And then if you've ever come to Dalesford, you might know that they have these little trays of um, samples. Normally at this time of the morning, it's brownies and cheese. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend having them together, but today I tried. I don't know if it's gonna have ended up in one of my bags or Charlie's bags. I swear I can smell it. Oh no, that's the garlic. Probably in one of Charlie's bags. They had these little samples of a sheep's cheese and it was so creamy and delicious i picked up a load of that and some figs as well so i thought i would do a little tester i'm going to test it out this afternoon a canapé of very thinly cut sourdough bread cut into little bite-sized bits with a little bit of the creamy uh, cheese then a little bit of a fig and then drizzle on top some honey and then sprinkle on top some toasted hazelnuts I probably didn't invent that. I probably saw it somewhere on Instagram, but probably, I don't know. It's just in my brain and I thought that is exactly in my head, like the dream canapé. So we will be making, um, or I will be making canapés on Boxing Day because we will eat a little bit later in the day on Boxing Day. We'll be having roast turkey. Let's get moving, shall we? We'll be having obviously turkey dinner on Christmas Day. Um, at around two-ish as a lunch and then we will probably have like nibbly bits in the evening but then on Boxing Day we do a beef wellington but we probably won't end up having that until about four-ish. Oops, I'm gonna let you go first mate. We made it. We made it out of the car park. Yes, it's a really miserable day and I was just thinking this morning how sad it is compared to last year's Vlogmas when we had magic, pure magic. We had a fairly early in December heavy snowfall here in the Cotswolds and then we had a deep freeze. We had those days where it was like minus eight. Oh my god, there are some seriously grumpy drivers out on the roads today. <laughs> my goodness! Um, yeah, and then it was minus eight in the evenings and just really, really cold for a full week. So basically that snow didn't melt and we had blue sky days and it just made everything feel more magical. Whereas this December, it's just been gray, fairly cold um, and wet. Another day of rain today, but we'll make it cozy in the house. We'll get some Christmas tunes going and um, we'll make some yummy Christmas gingerbread and canapes together.
So I decided to aid my um, creations that I'm going to be making today. I would also nip to the M&S food in Chipping Norton, mostly to get some dates. And I thought I will pick up some cream um, to make the eggnog ice cream today as well, because I have everything else I need. It does require dark rum. And I'm not sure if we've got dark rum at home, so I might see if they've got like one of those little aeroplane sized bottles because I don't want to buy an entire bottle of rum. I don't think any of our friends or family drink dark rum. Um, so I'm going to have a little look for that in here. I've just been circling this car park for about 15 minutes trying to get a space. It is crazy. It's that pre-Christmas rush. But also I just love having a look in um, supermarkets to see what their like festive specials are. I prefer to then try and make them myself, but I always like the inspo, so let's go and see what the festive offering is at Eminem. My goodness, the festive section is mega. So many, obviously, different turkey joints. We've already got ours sorted from Piper's Farm. I've grabbed a couple of dates without stones for my canapes. I feel like this would be a delicious um, alternative if we weren't doing a beef wellington on Boxing Day. <gasps> Mouth watering. And then all of your side dishes, goose fat roasties. This is such a good way of doing it if you're not such a confident cook and you don't want to do it yourself. I'm sure these are all absolutely delicious. You know, I'm always a fan of the DIY option, but if you're short on time or short on cooking skills, then it's a good way to do it. More festive treats, cranberry pork pie, yum. And pork pie selection. That looks rather delicious. Canapé section, this would be a nice option to take to a friend's house if they're hosting and you're tasked with bringing the charcuterie. And then these are the ones that I love to have a look at for inspo and then I'll try and make myself. Fried fondue bites, that would be quite fun to make. I don't have a deep fat fryer though, I feel like an air fryer would be so useful when it comes to making canapés. I'm sure I could probably do this. Butternut feta and sage quiche bites. Yeah, I could definitely do a DIY version of that. Another festive session. This is section rather. This is where they've got brandy butters, brandy cream. Oh my goodness. Such a selection. Brandy cream, brandy butter. Oh my goodness. Is this what I think it is? <gasps> An actual Swiss fondue it's cheese. Oh my gosh, is it just Gruyere? Let's have a look. Milk, cheese, and a bit of white wine. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna have to get one of these. I think festive Percy pigs are an essential. Let me know if you remember when I came in here when these were going TikTok viral. The sandalwood and bergamot. Everyone was saying it made your clothes smell like La Labo. I did try it out. They did smell good. It was a little bit of an over-exaggeration. But, ooh, they've got the capsules. I was never actually able to get my hands on those. Let's give these a try. Okay, managed to get everything I needed and more. Oh my gosh, people are eyeing me up, ready to zip into my parking space. So I shall speedily dash off. I'm going to... Whoop. It's yours, Doris. Um, I'm gonna head to the Waitrose and top up my petrol. Does anyone else that's my age or older still get really nervous when you try to buy alcohol at a supermarket? Even as a 32 year old woman, I still was thinking, oh my gosh, I don't have an ID with me. Obviously I did not get ID'd, <laughs> obviously. Um, I felt like Cameron Diaz when she goes to the village shop when she's buying everything and the lady's like, oh, having a party, are we? Because I literally bought all of the all of the little snacky bits, some crisps, bits and bobs, um, the rum. Didn't manage to find a small rum, so I guess I'll just make my eggnog extra filled with rum. There was a chap selling the Christmas big issue at the um, at the entrance, so I gave him a donation, and we'll uh, we'll have a look through this when we get home. I actually don't know what's in the festive big issue but they always say it's better better to actually take the magazine instead of just donating the money. So we'll have a little look through that later. I am excited for my, I'm excited for my pea soup with a little bit of sourdough and then I'm gonna make the cheese fondue and dunk the rest of my sourdough into the cheese fondue. Mm, it's gonna be scrumptious. I'm now queuing while other people wait for parking spaces. <sighs> I shall see you when we get home.
again, soup is on the go and a couple of really easy ways to elevate your soup. Apologies if this sounds really obvious, but I'm gonna pop a few um, flaked almonds in the agar just for a few moments so they get nicely toasted. I think these will go really nicely on top of a pea and watercress soup. I don't actually know why, maybe it's to keep the ingredients really flavoursome, but you're not meant to let soup boil, you're meant to cook it, bring it up to the warmth that you want it slowly over around five minutes, stirring it every now and then. Um, and then my toast, I will actually toast it a little bit more, then I'll drizzle it with olive oil, a little bit of salt, and put that in the oven for a few minutes as well, and it'll be absolutely delicious. So a little bit of a good quality olive oil. A tiny bit of salt into the agar. my slightly elevated soup experience. As you might have just spotted, I also added just a tiny little drizzle of cream onto the top of the soup. Uh, I don't normally have cream in the fridge, but I've got it ready to make the eggnog. So a drizzle of cream, drizzle of olive oil, my flaked toasted almonds, my elevated bread. It's just very simple, but oh my goodness, it makes your soup a million times better. day 2 p.m. Um, but I need to literally bring a light down to the kitchen because it is so dark but anyway uh, so had a lovely lunch my scrumptious soup and I'm now ready to be caffeinated and hydrated I have not been drinking enough water lately I remembered that this is what I was going to mention as another really good super last minute gift idea um, an ocean bottle because I think everyone needs a snazzy reusable water bottle and these are the best of the best. You can stick them in the washing, not the washing machine, wouldn't advise that. Stick them in the dishwasher. Um, you can use them as a coffee cup as well. You can take the lid off and use that as a little coffee cup. And then it's obviously thermos, so hot or cold. I've taken a matcha on a flight to New York before and it's still been hot when I've landed in one of these and it's very sustainable. They actually fund the collection of ocean bound, a thousand ocean bound plastic bottles with every purchase of an ocean bottle. Charlie and I both love them. We've got them in so many colors. We've got the big version. Um, they're just always on rotation in this house. There's always one in my handbag, always one in the car. They are the bomb diggity. So, oh, and I have a discount code, which I think is simply Josie LDM. So I'll leave that down below. Right, so we are going to be making some gingerbread men, or gingerbread people, whatever gender they are. They are genderless. Gingerbread, they thems. So, um, <laughs> don't know if I'm allowed to say that. Anyway, I'm making, I'm making gingerbread characters. And um, I'm going to be following the Christmas at High Clear book recipe, but I'm going to do it in the Thermomix because I've got one and I'm really lazy. You don't need a Thermomix to do this. You can mix the dry ingredients in a bowl, you can heat the wet ingredients on the hob, but I don't wanna wash up loads of different things, so I'm gonna do mine all in the Thermomix. But if you were doing it regularly without a Thermomix, you would start off, according to this recipe, by taking all the dry ingredients, sifting them into a large bowl, and then in a heavy based pan over a medium heat, you would heat the butter, the sugar, the syrup, um, until the sugar has dissolved and then add that into the dry mixture. So very, very easy indeed. I think you're then actually meant to put the dough in the fridge for a little while. This recipe does not say about doing that, but I'm pretty sure you're meant to put it in the fridge for a while. And I mentioned, was it in yesterday's video? I think it was, about how in this recipe book, I really like that it gives you some like historical information about the various Christmas traditional things. So uh, gingerbread, oh, Nuremberg in Germany is considered the gingerbread capital. In 1395, the medieval bakers used curved boards to create elaborate designs. 
They've been part of our cooking heritage for centuries. According to the book, Queen Elizabeth had some made, ooh, that must have been the first, to resemble the dignitaries of her court, to be served at festivals, which became known as gingerbread fairs. Gingerbread biscuits became known as fairings, and in Cornwall, they call them Cornish fairings. Hmm. Wow, so there's a company in Cornwall called the Cornish Fairings that started selling gingerbread men, gingerbread people, in 1886, and they still proudly bake gingerbread biscuits today. How fascinating. Right, let's get cracking. As I mentioned, I'm gonna do my infirm mix, and I think the first thing to do is melt down the butter, sugar, and m some recipes call for um, golden syrup. I don't have any, so I'm gonna be using lovely organic maple syrup. Right, let's get cracking. Okay, so this has been my butter, my maple syrup, uh, sugar, and a few of the spices melting down at 100 degrees for a few minutes. I might actually give it just a tiny little bit longer because we've still got some butter to melt. Having just complained about the lighting, this fabulous contraption has just arrived in an Amazon order. It's actually a ring light. Woo, look at that. Um, let's see how it looks if I... Oh, I don't know if I like how that looks. I feel like I look like I'm under a spotlight, um, but it does have settings. Maybe that's a little bit better, just like a nice warm lighting. What do you prefer? Do you prefer me to be plunged into darkness? Um, or do you prefer a slightly artificial light? I don't know, I wish there was something halfway in between the two. But anyway, we'll stick with it. So I've got a few other bits that luckily have just arrived in time from Amazon, some baking bits, so I'll show you those in a second. But now it's time to add the dry ingredients. looking gingerbread mixture here. It looks a little bit um, wet in my opinion so I've just added a teeny weeny bit more flour and I'm just going to continue mixing this all together just by hand for this last little bit. Now um, as I mentioned the High Clear book doesn't say anything about putting it in the refrigerator but I think we learnt with cookies that things tend to hold their shape better when they're refrigerated and especially with me thinking that this mixture might be a little bit on the wet side I think I will refrigerate it and also that means I can multitask with the creation of my eggnog ice cream all the other Amazon bits have just arrived as well perfect timing so I'll show you the rest of those but the recommended thing to do is to oh, yum is to put this into a bowl and then wrap it in cling film and put it in the fridge for an hour or so. So let's do that. Whoa, that is so good. Okie my darlings, let's um, let's bring our jazzy ring light out again. I quite like that it's on a wire, but it might fall. I, I don't know. I think maybe I prefer daylight. I think I prefer daylight. I'm just gonna pop that down there. That was a great Amazon purchase, wasn't it? Never mind. maybe it'll come in useful at some point, I don't know. Um, anyway, some more useful Amazon purchases. So I revealed yesterday was it yesterday? I think it was. That I went out in the store that I could not find my gingerbread cookers, cookers? Cutters? Anywhere. Um, an entire box of my baking items has vanished. Let me tell you something about my husband. I adore him, obviously. However, we could blame it on his OCD or the fact that he's just a bit of a plonker, but sometimes he takes things to a charity shop and doesn't check with me first. This is honestly the source of most of our arguments. And I think he has taken some of my baking items to the charity shop. So, instead of causing a big argument, I took a deep breath and I ordered some more from Amazon. And I have told him strictly not to touch my baking stuff ever again. Charlie, if you're watching, stay away from my baking things. So, <laughs> 
funny thing about the um the regular kind of cu uh, cutters in order to buy the metal versions which was my first choice you had to have an id like you had to show the amazon delivery driver your proof of age in order for him to deliver the metal ones i guess you could cause someone some damage with like a, a sturdy cookie cutter <laughs> cause of death cookie cutter um but I thought I can't be bothered with that because chances of me actually being home and conveniently by the door when he comes are slim to none. So I thought I'd just get the plastic ones so that he can leave them outside. And I'll leave all of these linked down below along with our Amazon storefront shop with last minute gift ideas because it's still not too late <laughs> when every other shop and half of the shops that Charlie and I have looked at recently, which are like prime gift shops, not Amazon Prime, like prime gift shops shops with items that are prime for gifting they're like closed for christmas and i understand small businesses do need a break but this is what forces us into jeff bezos's hands at this time of year we have no choice um i've digressed yes our amazon very last minute christmas gift guide will be linked down below and there are some really good bits if i can i'll pop a little preview on the screen here of some of the pieces um so I'll also leave these bits linked down below. I got some f festive shaped cutters, Christmas tree, bell, J, it's a J, it's a candy cane, but it could be a J. Snowman, can you even see? Snowman, <laughs> reindeer or Dickens on a particularly bad hair day. Gingerbread, genderless item, um, and <laughs> That does not look like Father Christmas unless it's got a lot of drawings within it. So I probably won't be using Father Christmas. And then the set also came with, and I thought these were gonna be a little bit bigger, some teeny weeny, can you even see? It's like a teeny weeny heart, a teeny weeny weeny star, and a teeny teeny weeny flower. I guess what I could do is like press them into the gingerbread to create a patterned gingerbread. That could be quite fun. And then I also ordered a mini muffin tray because I thought this would be really good for canapes, the puff pastry variety. So I'm going to be doing puff pastry with a little bit of brie in the middle, a little bit of cranberry. They're so easy and everyone loves those kinds of canapes. And this is the perfect size hole. So I got those. Also, because I'm planning on making a lovely festive brownie to take to George and Petra's for our Christmas Eve cocktail canapé evening. This is a bronze luster dust. So it's like a dust in a bronzy shade that you dust over your brownies. How many awful ingredients are in this, I wonder? I mean, it's only, you're only going to be consuming the tiniest little bit. So we, okay. Mika based pearlescence food grade colorant. Okay, well at least there's only two ingredients in there. Probably not particularly edible, but there we go. Couple of other bits that I bought. Thing with Amazon is you can't see the products that you're buying in real life, so sometimes I get the size of it wrong. I thought this was going to be like that big, like a little bit of candied ginger, crystallized ginger, but alas, I have got 10 years worth of ginger, so maybe I should make ginger ice cream. Oh no, I love the sound of eggnog ice cream, and I've got the eggs and the nogs now. So, also the icing, I'm, I was feeling particularly lazy. I could obviously have made my own icing, but I thought I would just buy pre-tubed icing, which is very unlike me, because you know I do like to make things from scratch. Again, let's look at the ingredients. Ah, fantastic. Oh my goodness me. Oh wow. Oh, maybe I shouldn't use this. This is awful. Okay, no surprise that the first ingredient is sugar, then glucose syrup, then water. However, <sighs> Merry Christmas. Have a load of chemicals. Palm oil, potato starch, rice starch, maltodextrin, emulsifiers, polyglycerol esters of fatty acids, monoacid, digilis serides of fatty acids, flavoring, preservative, potassium sorbate, stabilizer, pectins, and acidity regulator. Great. That is awful. But then you're only gonna have a tiny bit. This is why laziness <laughs> is bad because the ingredients within this. All right, let's just have a look at the ingredients in actual icing sugar. Right, 
Tate and Lyle's icing sugar. The ingredients are icing sugar, 90%, and dried glucose syrup. But what's in that dried glucose syrup? Either way, this with water is going to be a lot better for you than this. The fact that this has a sell-by date and this probably doesn't. Oh, it does actually, 2025. <sighs> yeah. I'll tell you what, becoming aware of ingredients has been a blessing and a curse because I like the fact that I can make better decisions based on understanding ingredients, but it takes the fun out of certain things like icing. I am going to use it on this occasion but I will not be buying it again. That is for sure. Right, so spiced eggnog ice cream. This again is something that I am so grateful to have a Thermomix for. I think you probably could make it in a saucepan and a blender. It just would be a little bit trickier um, or an ice cream maker. I often get asked if I have discount codes for Thermomixes. I'm afraid I do not. Um, I worked with them many moons ago, but I haven't worked with them in a couple of years now. I'll see if I can leave a link down below for where you can get them. Apparently it's a little bit of a pyramid scheme. I mean, it kind of is because people are recruited to sell Thermomixes and then they can recruit other people. But either way, it's an amazing product. And as you have seen, I use it a lot, a lot, a lot. And I use the Cookie Do app, which is where I get a lot of my recipes from, including my eggnog ice cream. So in case you do want to try making this yourself, I will essentially be heating, mixing, and then freezing whole milk, double cream, caster sugar, egg yolks, dark rum, vanilla bean paste, cinnamon sticks, ground nutmeg, and whole nutmeg for garnishing. Ice cream, <laughs> I did not mean for this vlog to become an ultra processed food chat, but it is something that I'm very interested in. Ice cream is one of the things which, when bought from a supermarket, most of the time, aside from randomly, there's a Sainsbury's own brand ice cream and haagen -Dazs. They are the only two that I know of that contain real ingredients. I think it's haagen or is it Ben & Jerry? I'll leave the correct answer on the screen here. Pretty sure it's haagen -Dazs. Most other ice cream brands, just look at the ingredients. And if it's not, well, let me read you haagen ingredients. Let's do a little side-by-side -side comparison. Okay, haagen vanilla ice cream. Okay, so on the haagen website, they literally have an entire paragraph explaining um, what they do and slightly throwing shade at what other ice creams do. And again, I have no affiliation with haagen -Dazs. So it says, we only use clean label kitchen friendly ingredients, AKA the real stuff to make ice cream like no other. We say no to preservatives, stabilizers, colors, and palm oil. We only use natural flavorings. We refuse to pump our product full of air. So with every spoonful, you get less air and more rich and delicious ice cream. Each scoop starts life as only four ingredients, cream, milk, sugar, and eggs. And that's essentially what I'm using here, cream, milk, sugar, and eggs. And then the things that you want to flavour it with, so in my case it's going to be rum and eggnog um, and actual spices. So four ingredients. If you're looking at buying an ice cream, cream, milk, sugar and eggs, that is what you want in it. Now, I'm not going to name the brand, but <laughs> um, other luxury ice cream brands, let me read you the ingredients of a different brand. Also stocked in Waitrose. <gasps> oh my god, it's even worse than I thought. Oh my gosh. Okay, so this is another ice cream which is the same price as Hagen Dar. Um, just as luxurious branding, but oh my goodness me. Are you ready for the ingredients? Reconstructed skimmed milk, sugar, glucose syrup, coconut fat, water, fructose, glucose, fructose syrup, cocoa powder, wheat starch, cream powder, sunflower oil, exhausted vanilla bean pieces, emulsifier, mono diglyceride, fatty acid, stabilizer, gua gum, lactose gum, taro gum, natural vanilla flavoring, salt, humectant, glycerol, color, cart carotenes, nuts and soy. <sighs> it's just crazy when these two things look identical and yet one of them is full of junk and one of them is full of real ingredients. That is why I'm interested in this because there can be two things that are so similar. One can be awful for you and one can be a treat, but not like full of crappy ingredients which are going to give you long-term medical issues. Anyway, I'm sorry, this is not a festive chat. <sighs> Moral of the story is make your own ice cream or <laughs> read the ingredients and Hagen-Dazs is normally a pretty safe shout. 
Wowza. We've just been conned, haven't we? There's so many things in this world that like, like my wasabi peas story the other day. Anyway, let's make some lovely wholesome ice cream. So the first thing I need to do is um, separate, where are my eggs? And also if you make it yourself, you can use organic ingredients, which is even better because I don't know of any like mass available organic ice creams. Let me know if there are any. So six eggs um, and I only need the yolks. So I'm going to save the whites and make myself an egg white omelette in the morning. Right, let's get cracking. <laughs> I, I didn't even mean that, but I am physically about to get cracking. Okay, my ice cream has uh, spent the last eight minutes cooking, which is the opposite to what you would think an ice cream needs to do, but there it is. Yep, you cook the um, like egg yolk and the sugar. I just um, had a look on Waitrose at the ingredients of haagen -Dazs versus another luxury ice cream, and it is insane. haagen -Dazs is good. Yeah, haagen -Dazs is, is good. Is it actually really good or just okay? Yeah. Well, it, they use real ingredients, but obviously you don't know the quality. It's not necessarily like organic milk and cream and stuff. But it's legit. I mean, how bad is it? A state, this country, and just food in general is when you have to praise a brand for using what they say they are using. Yeah. Great, they've made ice cream that's actual food. Yeah, not um, fakeness. Anyway, what have you got there, darling? Right, so we're hosting Christmas, Boxing Day, and New Year's. And um, obviously, I don't drink, which is always hilarious when I go to the wine merchant. <laughs> yeah, like you're their best customer and you don't drink. I like to A, support our local wine merchants. We could probably have got this more cheaply in the supermarket but next year for me is the year that I'm going to try and do a whole year without going to a supermarket wow. and just support farm shops and local shops mm. privately owned mm. um, and also British brands and I said you know nothing against France beautiful country love France <laughs> but the UK economy is struggling let's support British brands Nye Timber pay their tax in this country and they're a British brand yeah so it's made in the UK and it's even more you delicious with them but yeah. We've obviously had them at the wedding. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so I bought six bottles of each. Mm -hmm. Hopefully that should last us for Christmas and New Year's. We've also got a couple of magnums left in the We wedding. do. And we've got um, a ton of red and white wine and rosé yes. in, in there. So the, we've got the pink one and the classic cuvee, which my mum likes. Yeah. So do you know what? I'm doing something you're not really meant to do, but then it's interesting because most people do it. Filling the fridge. Well, no, you're not really meant to keep. I, d I was told once that you're not meant to store champagne in the fridge. What? Like you're meant to put it in the fridge, ready for it, but you shouldn't leave it in the fridge for weeks and weeks. Por qué no? It's normally when you store it in a cellar, it's obviously cold, but it's not fridge cold. But maybe someone, ah. can, maybe someone will just, I don't know, like someone told me that one. So yeah, this fridge is going to look good. What, do you want to keep some rosé in here? I'd I think, rather replace it with champagne for Christmas. I think it's probably a safe bet to keep a rosé in there. Okay, probably don't need three in there, do we? No. Um, Lovely. I always find it funny how wine can say vegan because you never consider the fact that it, it isn't. But mm. there you go. Right. Yeah. Lovely. Well done, darling. Did you buy anything else? No, just that. No. Right. So because I used actual cinnamon sticks in the ice cream, um, I do have to sieve it. So I'm going to sieve it through our finest mesh sieve into an ice cream container, and then I'll actually leave it to come up to room temperature before putting it into the freezer. Okay, my darlings, it is about 40 minutes later, almost pitch black outside, it's 4 p.m. now. So the ice cream, I'm just waiting for it to get completely up to room temperature. These tubs that I got on Amazon in the summer are the best things because they're scoop length, <laughs> you literally just scoop down the length of it and you've got a perfect ball of ice cream and they're just the perfect size for fitting in your freezer, they don't take up too much space. So love these 
And then I've just got my gingerbread out of the fridge. It's probably been in there for just over an hour. So hopefully should be in the perfect state to be rolled out. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of flour on at the worktop and roll it out. So it's about half a centimeter thick, I think would be the ideal thickness. Um, now I wanted to mention something just chatted been chatting with charlie about this very much aware that this vlog has been a lot of like christmas food chat and um yeah very much that kind of theme and i was reading this article in the big issue while having my lunch um and it's talking about how obviously there are a lot of families here in the uk that are not going to be able to afford um, a lovely christmas dinner and it says here the charity is called fair share that, and they are fighting hunger and tackling food waste, that a donation of 90 pounds could help feed a family of four for an entire month. I think what this charity does is they distribute the food from like food donation points. So I was thinking I will make that donation, but then also what I was thinking I would do, and we did this last year as well for a different charity, is the ad revenue from this video I will also donate the entire ad revenue from this video to the charity. So if you would like to um, partake in some small way without having to physically make a monetary donation, then maybe watch this video over again and watch the adverts all the way through. Because I would say for every, actually I don't know what one person watching all the adverts would equate to, but if 60,000 of you watch all the ads all the way through. That is a really good donation that we will be able to make to this charity and feed a lot of families um, for an entire month. Sometimes I find it a bit weird talking about charity stuff, like I never want to um, come across like I'm mentioning it to get brownie points. I know that a lot of people online feel that way and they rather keep their donations private. And obviously there's a lot of things that Charlie and I do behind the scenes, both locally and um, further afield that we don't feel the need to shout about. Like for our wedding, we said strictly no gifts um, and we'd rather people made a donation and we recommend some charities and lots of other little things, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna talk about them for the sake of just, you know, I don't know, maybe it's a British thing, but yeah, don't feel the need to share every aspect of our lives but i think uh that's a nice way of including you guys so if you would like to help go put some um funding towards this charity so that lots of families can eat well this month then stick the video on repeat leave the ads running and i will let you know in a couple of days how much we've raised that i will be donating to the charity so my gingerbread now is rolled out that is maybe a little bit thick on that side actually i've got my baking sheet prepared there with baking paper and finally we get to the fun bit cutting out our gingerbread men now i think it's probably better if i do loads of these and then remove the gingerbread pastry from the outside my first tray of the gingerbread men. I'm gonna pop this in the agar. I'm gonna do 10 minutes to start with and then see how they look. Now I don't know if this will show up on camera, probably not, but we have got, oh yeah kind of, we've got a really gorgeous pink sky tonight which is rather beautiful. I always feel a little bit sad when there's not been much outside content <laughs> during vlogmas. Obviously in spring and summer I'm just always out here doing my gardening. Okay, my gingerbread people are out of the aga. This one had a little bit of an accident with his arm because he was too close to the edge, but the others have turned out rather beautifully. A little bit of um, spreading going on. Uh, so I've popped the remaining gingerbread mixture back in the fridge to like cool down again. I presume, I mean, I don't really have an option. I have to roll it out and redo them. I might do some bell shapes next, or should I just do more gingerbread people? These are quite cute, aren't they? Maybe I'll just do only gingerbread people. 
but very happy with those and they feel like they've got a little bit of squidge to them because I do like them to have a little bit of chew and gingerbread seems to last quite well so these will be able to keep them in the cake stand all over the Christmas period which is wonderful. Right, I'll let those cool down and I shall prepare batch number two. Okay, my darlings, second set of gingerbread people is now cooked. Voila. And I just took the, where's it gone now? The mini, the mini heart presser. Um, and I just pressed it into this batch's gingerbread people's chests. Um, just for a little, cute little detail. I've had an idea. So the Sun Mix recipe called for crystallized ginger within the gingerbread men, whereas the high clear recipe, which I just used, did not. It, w it wanted just proper spices. So I have got this <laughs> ginormous bag of crystallized ginger. Just been reading online. Apparently there's lots of health benefits to having this. I guess it's probably gonna be like little sweets. Um, obviously they're crystallized, they're cooked in syrup, so high sugar, but meant to be really nice um, just with some hot water, lemon and honey in a tea. So I'm gonna give that a try. But I also thought I'm gonna pop a couple of these in my Thermomix and blend them up and store in this jar. First of all, when I'm doing the icing of the gingerbread people, um, I could probably like sprinkle some of this as a decorative thing. But then I also thought when I make um, gingerbread margaritas at Christmas, I can use crystallized blitzed up ginger around the edge of the cocktail glass. Wouldn't that be amazing? I think it would. So yeah, I'm gonna stick a load of that in the blender while these cool down and then we'll do a little bit of gingerbread icing. That was really silly of me because this is a resealable bag and I just cut the lid off. Oh dear. So the tea with the crystallized ginger and lemon was a great success. I might add a tiny bit more honey, but because the ginger is crystallized, it's added a really nice bit of sweetness. And a big thank you to Nom Living, who sent us a couple of new mini mugs. I'm very sad to say that these were never put into production, although I think they should be. These were little samples, and they sent us a couple of these uh, just to say thank you for buying from them and for featuring a lot of their cups in the past you might recall do you know this is so funny like all of our crockery is from all of our mugs are from nom but these big ones that i have my oh vlogmas alarm this goes off every day at five to remind me to put my video up um yeah these ones which i have my massive cappuccinos from every day they are from nom living and they very kindly sent us a new little mini so the tea is a great success and that's just the perfect size for me what was not a success however is um blending of the candied crystallized ginger because it's just gone a little bit mushy um so not too sure what i can do to dry this out and get my desired kind of sugar effect for the top of the glasses any ideas please let me know but i think with this concoction i might actually make a gingerbread banana bread like i did with scarlet um a couple of weeks ago so it will not go to waste Hello again, darlings. I've spun the ring lights round. If you're wondering how I'm illuminated from this side, no one was wondering that, were they? Absolutely not. So, pardon? <laughs> While my gingerbread cools down, Charlie and I are going to do the advent calendar in a second, but I also wanted to undo these little gifts which have arrived from Erin. I think they're both from Erin today. Um, I just love their products and I've been wearing their Rose de Grasse fragrance today actually. Let's have a little look inside here. I think these all came together. We shall soon find out. Beautiful packaging. Oh my goodness. La Verdic Handmade Chocolate. Oh my gosh, this could be rather special. I think actually they did this last year and apparently it's a really renowned um, ooh, <gasps> chocolatier in LA, I think. 
pretty sure they're in LA. Okay, there's a load of different US addresses here, none of which are in LA. That is adorable, little chocolate mouse, M mouse, mice. Oh my goodness, can you see? That is so sweet. I wonder if they're all the same. Well, obviously they're not all the same flavor because they're different colors of chocolate. Oh, that is so sweet. What a lovely little Christmas gift. I will very much enjoy snuffling these when we've next got friends over with a lovely glass of wine or something. Love a luxury chocolate at Christmas time. And what a sweet little box that they arrive in as well. Thank you, Erin. And then in here, the box would lead me to believe that it's potentially going to also be something from the Rose de Grasse collection. I certainly wouldn't mind a top up. Let's have a look. Oh my gosh. Rose de Grasse Joyful Bloom. Now, I don't know if this is the one that I bought in Palm Beach, Palm Beach with Freddie. Let me know if you remember that vlog or if it's a different one. Let's see. Ooh, it might be a more, more um, intense version. Joyful Bloom. Should work quite nicely on top of the original Rose de Grasse that I'm wearing today. And then the matching candle, how gorgeous. Such a lovely gift set. If that makes my room smell like I now smell with that perfume, that's going to be heavenly in this beautiful little gift box. How lovely, thank you, Erin. I think what I might do is actually keep the base of this and line it with baking paper to keep my gingerbread men in. I think that could be a really good idea. So what I'm gonna do now, after we've done the advent calendar, is I'm just going to sit down, put someone's vlog on the side in the background, and get decorating. So you'll have just seen a time lapse of um, the gingerbread cookie decorating. I then went upstairs um, to give Charlie space in the kitchen to cook and just got really carried away doing a little festive DIY manny. Excuse the fact that my wedding ring is off from doing the clay work, but um, I just think these look so cute. So. Nicole came over yesterday and did my gel removal for me and a little bit of a tidy up and I do have a proper nail appointment on the eve of Christmas Eve but I thought I would do a little DIY to have some fun festive nails this week. I will show you on this hand after we've eaten because I just decided to do one hand completely. Um, but essentially I used a builder gel and then two layers of manicurists, I think it's called milky white, and then the little gold bits, I just used my finger, like popped it in the pot, you'll see in a second, um, and dabbled on a little bit of gold glitter, pale hands, and then a top coat. So really, really happy with how they look. A nice little festive nail just to have for this week because we've got a few festive activities and I do find that when you have glitter at the bottom it doesn't often last as well so I thought this or it really kind of like highlights when you've got regrowth so I thought that would be nice to have just for a week really pretty very easy if you're not particularly good at um, nail art but you just want something subtle and festive so we're gonna have our chicken stir fry and then I'll take you upstairs and do a little time lapse as so you can see creating this on the other hand.
somebody in the puppy waiting room. Oh, oh two room. puppies in the puppy waiting room. Come on then, time for bed. So here are my finished gingerbread people, including one inter interesting one. I mean, they do look like a five-year-old did them. I was just but... about to say, are these from the local village school? <laughs> no, I mean, look, they're cute. I was hoping for a bit of colour on them. Like, what? like a red Santa hat or like a green... You've got a bit of gold sparkle, mate. That's all you're getting. So there I we go. I think what will hopefully be fun is one day we'll watch this with like a six or seven year old child. And, and they, they will have done a better job. Better. But, you know, <laughs> I couldn't do any better either. No. So. And here's my finished nails. Not that my camera's going to focus. Um, I tried to show you under the light of my phone torch earlier. So we've got milky white with some gold sparkle down at the bottom. My goodness. My hand looks dishevelled. <laughs> right, my darlings, that's the end of today's vlog. I'll see you in the morning. Thank you.